let it load. All right, well, once again, uh, thanks for coming to my presentation here. <laughs> uh, this better work. Okay, well, taking a bit of time to load. Okay, fine. Do I dare make it full screen? No, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> okay, so what is Claritas? I already covered that one. So it's uh, a commercial system that went from sort of GNS and academia to more of a commercial system that we're selling around the world now and actually doing quite well with. So you might ask yourself, okay, what's Python? Python is an open source uh, general purpose programming language. It's interpreted, you know, with uh, an asterisk there. Dynamically typed, uh, yeah, suitable for interactive work, uh, quick prototyping. Also large applications, graphics, uh, you know, web-based stuff, network protocols, all sorts of things like this. Uh, they call it batteries included a lot because it has a, a very extensive uh, standard library and also very easy to extend with uh, additional modules, packages, things like this. Uh, it also interfaces really well with other, other languages like C, C++, Fortran. So what is, what is NumPy? Uh, so you can think it's similar to a MATLAB style array for Python, but it's also much more. Uh, it's open source, VSD license, which means it's, it's totally free to use. You don't have to pay any, uh, any fees. Uh, it has what they call an n-dimensional array object, which means you know 1D, 2D, 5D, 10D, however many you want. Uh, like MATLAB, very uh, advanced array slicing methods, reshaping, linear algebra, algebra Fourier transforms, uh, you know, all sorts of things like that. Uh, you can share arrays and structures with C and C++, which means you're actually sharing that same exact chunk of memory which uh, w is pretty important and it's important to us so I'll, I'll talk more about that later. It's also cross-platform so it runs pretty much on every system we support and most systems uh, people are using. Okay so what's SciPy? Uh, well this builds on NumPy and you know they call it the kitchen sink if the other one is batteries included so uh, I won't go through all of them here but basically offers you, uh, you know, almost everything you'd, you'd want for uh, high performance uh, scientific computing. <coughs> so, uh, integrating Claritas and Python, uh, we started working that on that in late 2008. Uh, and that gives us uh, what we call a, a Claritas module, which is just a little component you stick in a job flow. Uh, it gives the user an easier alternative to, to Fortran and C, mm -hmm. uh, giving you much quicker development time, especially if you're uh, new to programming, it's much easier to learn. Uh, the source code is much more compact, which means, you know, if you're writing a certain amount of code in a day, uh, you can just get it done much easier easier in, in Python. There's no compiling or linking stage, which is another benefit. Uh, lots of people already know Python and NumPy, SciPy, so it's uh, it's a, a good feature there, and it's also very similar to MATLAB. Uh, lots of good testing frameworks available. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get into that. Uh, yeah, and the, the last point here, less frustration and stress, more fun, greater productivity. You know, unless you're trying to actually present this talk, then it's uh, <laughs> quite stressful. <laughs> okay, so here's just a, a quick summary table of uh, the pros and cons uh, with respect to uh, integrating it to Globe Claritas. This, is, this isn't really, you know, Python versus MATLAB in general. This is just for our, our sort of case. So Python... Python, NumPy, uh, open source, no subscri subscription fee, whereas MATLAB is. Uh, that means you also need these, these license keys and you can only have so many people in the, uh, in the institute using them at a, at a time. I'm sure we all have seen those emails. Uh, yeah, with Python you can share the memory between C and Python, so there's no copying. MATLAB you have to use pipes and Unix and COM and Windows, it's really, it's not, not cool. Uh, Python very quick startup, MATLAB a bit slower. Low memory overhead for Python, much larger for MATLAB. Uh, the communities are a bit different in size, but definitely the Python one's growing very quickly. Uh, definitely some immature modules in Python. Uh, MATLAB is very, very mature, having been around for, well, forever. Uh, Python, MATLAB, pretty similar performance, really. So here's a, a simplified workflow of uh, what happens in a typical Claritas job where you have this, this Python integration. Uh, so typically, Claritas jobs read one trace at a time and pass it off to the next, uh, you know, module in the stage of processing. 
do this for one trace at a time and then go up, at, up and start it again with the next trace. But in a typical sort of uh, run Python job, you would want to buffer these up. So you have to either read or create some new data and then buffer a specified amount of traces. Typically a shot gather, CDP gather, maybe a, an entire stack section. And then the C code is going to create some Python objects and then it's going to initialize Python and pass these objects over to that Python function and just let it run. And since uh, it's all shared memory, uh, there's no need to copy anything back. So then we come back to the C code, release the traces one by one again, and then we do any other processing. So it's uh just a few of you so they can see you. Sure. Alright. So what can it do? Uh, well here's a, a very quick example of uh, one thing we needed to do. Uh, which was to execute a custom mathematical expression that users might want to do for, for trace headers in the processing. So in, I don't know if you guys are aware, but in processing seismic data, you typically have you know one or more traces and uh, the corresponding number of trace headers, which are usually integers, but not necessarily. And so that's metadata. Metadata it might uh, you know you might have something like CDP number, shot number, offset, all sorts of things like that in your trace header. And it's very useful for people to have sort of a Microsoft Excel style uh, expression here that they want to execute on those trace headers. And we didn't really have anything like that beforehand, nothing very powerful, unless you wanted to get into Fortran, which a lot of people really don't want to, and I can't blame them. <laughs> so, so here's the sort of example that we wanted to have. Um, so header one, you know, that would be a new one you made equals offset times 2.99 divided by the absolute value of shot ID modulo 20 plus 0.1. You know, that's just absolutely made up. It just shows that, you know, you want things like your brackets to work fine. You want things to be uh, executed, you know, as you would expect. So why Python? Um, well, it's quite difficult to do stuff like this, evaluate these sort of expressions in a compiled language like C or Fortran. But it's quite easy in Python. Uh, for the most part, it's just one one command. And yeah, we had a, a working prototype with it within about an hour. It took a bit longer to get it, you know, an actual module. But yeah, it, it shows shows how powerful some of this stuff is. And this will be called header math in the next version of Python. Coming out, well, we won't say exactly when it's coming out. Yeah, <laughs> when it's done. Okay, so larger examples. All right, now we we can switch from the presentation to something else. Now hopefully this will will work fine here. I'm using the command line just to bring up the launcher here. You don't really have to use the, uh, the command line. Okay, so here's the Claritas launcher which is sort of used to, uh, to run all the applications in Claritas. So I'll select the first job. I mentioned header math earlier, so here's a job that, that shows it. So I'll just go through these things. These are all modules, as I mentioned earlier. So the first first one, it's just common to every job. I won't go into that. The second one reads a stack seismic section from disk. This thing called add dig uh, reads a file called a dig file, .dig, which has a digitized horizon in it. In this case, it's a digitized horizon of the seafloor. So that sticks it in a trace header called delay. Then we have header math, which has all the the guts of the uh, expression I was talking about, and then we're displaying it on the screen with XView. So here's a few of the uh, expressions that are in here. Uh, you just have to tell it it's a stack section and you want to process you know, so many traces at a time. You can either have all your expressions uh, in, a, in a file if you want, basically just a, a Python file, or you can uh, type them out here on, this, uh, on these four lines. Oh, I don't dare press F5. <laughs> All right. So I'll just go through it really quickly here. So spare one is equal to delay, or the, the place where we set those uh, digitized values earlier. And these are all integers. Spare two 